Linux is a powerful operating system. It's a great server OS. Mac and Windows have their, uh, their domain. They are very useful as personal computers on your desktop or on your laptop. But on the server, Linux rules. So every developer who writes server software needs to know Linux and the common commands that Linux uses. So today we are going to talk about common Linux commands that every developer must know. So let's get started. So I have my cheat sheet here just to tell me what all commands I'm going to use on the right hand side. And on left hand side, I have a terminal running. Now this could be a Linux terminal as is the case with me, but it could also be a terminal in Mac. And if you are using Windows, you can use either Linux subsystem for uh, Windows, sorry, the Windows subs subsystem for Linux, WSL or WSL2. You could also use git bash, which runs on Windows. So uh, what we are going to discuss is applicable to all those scenarios. Okay, so first command that you must know in Linux is ls. And as you can see, there's one file in this current directory. It's called nohub.out. ls stands for list files in the current working directory or in a given directory. So if you want to see more information about this file, nohub.out, then you have to type ls minus l. And now it shows you more detail, the long, long form output. Um, but this file directory might contain other hidden files, files starting with a dot. So for that, you have to say ls minus la. In fact, as a developer, you should always uh, use ls minus la and ls not ls minus l alone. You could also say ls minus a, in which case it shows all the files, including the dot files, but without the details. So there are a few other useful uh, options. So for example, let's uh, go one up uh, where there are more directories. Uh, so say, sure, ls minus l a, okay, more directories. Let's uh, make this window a little bit larger. Okay, ls minus la, yeah, so these are uh, so in the output, you will see these are the file attributes, file mode, that is, which means it's a, this one is a directory. It is read, it has the, the owner has read permission, the owner has write permission, and the owner has execute permission. The group owner, which is, <coughs> excuse me, the group of the primary owner, uh, which is this, uh, has permissions, read, not write, and yes, on execute. Other users who are outside of that group, they have read permission, they do not have a write permission, and they have execute permission. So that's how you read this column. And then this is the user who owns the file. This is the group who owns the file. This is the size of the file, and the modification dates and time, and of course, the name of the file. So if you want it, want to see the most recently modified file, ls minus lt, uh, um, lt is a sort by time. So now it will, as you can see, December, July, uh, June, May, it's going in most recent first and old ones, you know, later. But if you wanted to see most recent at the bottom, you say ltr. So now, therefore, no hub.out is at the bottom because it's most recent from December 5th today. Now, so that's why I use ls minus ltr a. That pretty much always gives me the most relevant information that I want. Also, there is another one called ls minus d, or let's say ld, and then instead of showing all the files in that directory, it will only show you information about the directory alone. 
All right. So if I say ls minus l, okay. The other one is cd. I just use cd. So uh, let me cd back to where I came from. cd minus takes you back where you come from. cd minus again just keeps going back uh, back and forth between two directories. And then if I say cd dot dot, which is the parent, and then slash the screencast directory that I had. So now if I, so this is how you change directories and it changes the current working directory, which means all the file references that you make from that point onward are relative to this directory. So cd minus again, takes me to droid cam, cd minus one more time, brings me back to screencast. Okay. Also your home directory is tilde. So if you say L, ls minus ld tilde, that's your home directory. As you can see, it's home Jitesh, okay, um, in my case. And you could just say ls minus l tilde, and now these are all the files that are in there. So ld will uh, tell me only about the directory. Now, uh, keep in mind, tilde is just a, a shell replacement for home directory, shell shortcut, if you will, short name for your home directory. Uh, you could always say slash home slash jitesh, which is my home directory. Or you could also use dollar sign home. That is an environment variable uh, called home. And by prefixing it with dollar sign, you are uh, resolving the value of that environment variable. Okay, so next, let's talk about the current working directory. Which directory am I in? Well, I fortunately have a, a decent shell setup where um, my current working directory is being shown. But if I didn't have a shell setup for that, I could just type pwd. And now pwd is saying that my current working directory, by the way, pwd stands for path of current working directory. And uh, it's slash home slash jitesh slash dev slash screencast, which and in the shortcut version is tilde slash dev screencast. All right, so now the next useful command is echo. So echo, if you just type by itself, prints an empty line. But if you say echo something, then it prints something followed by uh, a new line. Uh, you could also give it multiple arguments like arg1, arg2, arg3, and now it's printing all three of them together. But what if uh, you wanted, uh, but if you, let's say you had spaces between the arg2 and arg3, you press enter, and yet arg2 and arg3 are printed right next to each other with, with a single space. Why is that? That's because the shell uh, is treating these as three separate args and then it is ignoring this white space in between. In fact, it it uh, it will take any special characters also. It will be affected by special characters. If you don't want that, then just wrap them in, a, in single quotes. And now the entire thing from here to here is treated as a single argument instead of as three arguments. So now you have those spaces preserved. Uh, you can use single quotes or you can do also use double quotes. There is a slight difference between a double and single quotes. And that difference is double quotes means, so in double quotes, if you have uh, some shell variable, the user, then as I used dollar user and it replaced it with Jitesh. But if I had single quotes, then dollar user is read by the command literally as dollar sign user. So this is, you have to keep in mind that these command line arguments are processed by shell, not by echo, but by the shell. And the shell looks at dollar user and replaces it with Jitesh. And that's what echo is seeing and echo is printing that. Now, let's look at another one called, um, by the way, if you wanted to just print dollar user, you don't need any double quotes or single quotes. Or, in fact, double quotes will 
are unnecessary while single quotes uh, will simply take the dollar user as literal dollar user and not think of it as a variable so let's uh, look at the next one called cat cat stands for concatenate so let's see what it does um, you just type cat and now if i type something it prints back something so what it is doing is it is reading my input and writing it to output okay so whatever you type it just echoes it back so what's the difference between echo and cat well the answer is echo prints the whatever is on the command line arguments while cat prints whatever you type through the keyboard which is standard input okay so now you're you got stuck it just keeps doing this how will it ever uh, exit so the answer is um, control D we have to send an end of file character and that is control D so if I press control D as you can see it ended cat it uh, so basically uh, control D is interpreted as end of file so that's what it is okay also if you are stuck in a program that uh, is not exiting because of control D then press control C which means abort this program okay so now that we understand basics of cat let's look at IO redirection and pipes so what does that mean so so for IO redirection uh, Linux and most operating system nowadays uh, or Unix like operating system they have STD in standard input STD out standard output and STD ERR we will skip the ERR let's just talk about out and in so that your keyboard is thought of as the standard input by default and your terminal uh, output is considered std out so whenever a program runs it read tries to read from std in and writes to std out so that is a i mean a classic such a program is cat it's reading from std in and it's uh, writing to std out now io redirection means let's do some output redirection first which means greater than sign so you type a command follow it up with greater than sign and now a file so let's call this file one dot txt so now whatever i type line one i'm not seeing it on the output what happened to it how come it's not echoing back line one how about line two it's still not doing anything line three not doing it well let's end our input with control d okay so now that's end of file indicator and at this point if i do ls minus la i see file one dot txt excellent so file one dot txt if i cat it now cat remember can by default it reads std in writes to std out but if you give it a file name it will use that file and print that out so it just so cat is showing me the file okay so another way of doing the same thing is not give it a command line parameter but just use less than sign so this is the opposite of greater than sign where the it takes the the file and turns it into std in standard input so now cat is reading from uh, file1.txt it did not allow me to type anything into cat because it already has a an std in replacement which is file one dot txt and the std out is still going to std out well we can replace fix that too we can out, redirect the output to file two dot txt so if i do that now it read from file one dot txt which means it read these lines and then it sent the output instead of std out it's sent to this file which is why when you do ls minus ltra you see those that file and and not coincidentally file one and file two they both have the same size not just the same size but also same content okay so that's io redirection there is one more thing i wanted to tell you about which is uh, instead of 
just greater than sign simply replaces whatever was in that file. So for example, if I show you what's in file 2.txt, it's this. And then if I say echo something and send it to file 2.txt, now when I cat file 2, by the way, I am using tab character. I want to show you that I am when I just type. So yeah, um, sorry, I got distracted. That when you cat echo something greater than file2.txt simply overwrote and replaced the contents. It did not append. So now you have nothing, uh, you have this something and no none of the line one, line two, line, line three are there. But you can append, you can just say, let's see, let's recall the previous one how we created file 2. So now we have file 2. File 2 contains line 1, line 2, line 3. If we do the same thing again, except this time, we replace greater than sign with double greater than. If we do this, now watch what happens. Catting file 2.txt shows the original content plus whatever you added, which means that greater than sign replaces the content while double greater than appends the contents and of course less than reads the contents to standard input so that is io redirection there is something else we need to talk about pipes unix pipes okay so pipes are basically very useful they are chains of commands where the output of one command becomes the input of another okay so let's see Treat, so, so let's let's see some examples. There it is. Um, let's see a program called TR, for example. You give it TR as in translate, and then you give it one word uh, letter range and a second letter range, two letter ranges. It will now if you do it this way, it says read your input and if you see something in the range a to z then replace it with this range capital a to capital z let's see what this does so this is some thing else let's even if it is already up uppercase it remains uppercase so this is how it, whatever you type becomes all uppercase if it is if it's a number or special characters and then they are unmodified so that's what tr is doing right okay so now if i have ls ls minus l this is what it's showing if i pipe it through my tr command this one so ls minus la tr a to z goes to capital a to capital z now, it simply took the input and passed it through this command. So that's what pipe is. So pipe, basically, what happened is ls produced its output, which went to std out. Then the pipe character followed by the second command. So what happened is the std out of this command became std in of this command. And you can keep doing this. You can take it further. You could say, hey, now I want... Um, I want to replace um, all capital letters, which means A through Z with lowercase letters. And now it's back to what it was. So you can keep chaining it, okay? Uh, or you could just, uh, let's, let's shift all characters. So A through Z um, becomes B through Z, let's say. As you can see, they, they all got shifted a little bit. Okay, so this kind of stuff, all kinds of games you can play with pipes and pipes are very very useful okay so um, just uh, be careful pipes are extremely useful okay so um, next I will make you more use of pipes and yeah. let's, let's let's look at other commands like let's say make mkdir right um, so how to create a directory? Well, you create it with mkdir. You could say mkdir uh, d1, and that created d1. 
has a directory it's in blue and it has a d and prefix um, you could create what if you wanted to create let's what if you wanted to remove the directory so rmdir d1 okay so now it's gone now let's say you wanted to create a new file in a certain directory you could if you just want to create the file use touch command touch f1 let's say and that creates this file f1 uh, what if you wanted to create it in some directory d1 so touch d1 slash f1 it doesn't work so the directory must exist exist before you can touch a file in it and now you have d1 and in d1 you have f1 okay so what if you wanted to delete this directory rmdir d1 it doesn't work why because it contains a file so your choices are delete the file first or you could delete the file uh, and then de delete the directory or you could delete both of them together with rm minus rf not rf sorry rm minus r and then recursively delete what's in this directory and that deleted the directory but first it deleted the file inside it what if you wanted to create directory structure that had multiple levels so like um, make directory d1 d2 d3 it just cannot create no such file or directory what does that mean or it can it could create d1 first and then d2 and then d3 but it is trying to create d3 first without d1 and d2 existing so how do you get around that you can just give a minus p as in parent option and when you do that it creates all the parents that are needed and now you have d1 and d1 contains d2 and d2 contains d3 by the way you can use tree command to show the tree of the current directory so it's showing these are the files in the current and then it has this directory structure if you touch a file in d1 slash d2 slash d3 let's call it f123 and now if you type tree so you see it's showing you the entire tree so tree is a very useful command if you had another directory in kdir d1 slash dx let's say then tree will show that d1 has two children d2 and dx so that's what tree is for okay um, how to copy files so that's the command is cp so if you have uh, these files here and if i say cp file 1 to um, file 3.txt let's say then it simply copied the file file 1 and file 3 are copies of each other now what if you want but it doesn't have to be uh, just the file it can be a directory as a destination in which case cp file 1 and let's by the way i'm using tab again you saw that I, if in let me explain this tab completion so if you tap i just press f and press tab it shows me all it will try to show me what, what possible completions are available so if i say i and now press tab it shows me it completes that and then waits so let me show you i'm gonna show my keyboard keystrokes so f tab and then i tab so it showing you this now if i tab again it shows me all the possibilities and now i have to select one let's say i let's press one and then tab it completes the whole file because that's the unique match now if i say now I want to go to I want to copy this into d1 d2 d3 and it has copied so the destination can be a directory so if I run tree now you see how d1 d2 d3 has file1.txt also so that's what CP does okay let's see um, if you wanted to copy entire 
directory structures, you can use cp minus r. So for example, cp minus r uh, d1 slash d2 to d1, let's say a whole new file directory called foo. And now when I run tree, it copied d1 slash d2 into foo. So which, because d1 slash d2 contains d3, now foo also contains d3 and all of its children. So that's what this guy, um, minus r option does. Okay. Well, how do you rename mv? mv or move, you cannot say move, you have to say mv. Linux likes to be succinct, fewest characters uh, when possible. So, so let's see. MV. Let's say if you want to rename a file, um, let's say I want to rename file 3.txt into file 3. I don't know, JavaScript. MV file 3.txt. I'm pressing tab again to file 3. If I do tab, it completes whatever is present. But if I say JavaScript, JS. So now a file has been renamed. You can rename um, directories also. So foo to let's say bar. And now the directory has been named, renamed to bar. So the other is grep. Grep lets you search through uh, files. And with minus R option, it can also let you search recursively through files and directories. So if I say, um, grep the word line through all files by the way all files means star if you do that it is showing me file one has to line 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 all these things right if i say i want to look for line one so if, since i want to use line one and i want to use um, treat it like a single word and not two separate arguments so i have to say line uh, one in single quotes or double quotes. So now it's finding line one everywhere, but it didn't find everywhere. There are many copies of these files that it could find this in. So you can do that with minus R. So once I did minus R give minus R option, it's also finding in all subdirectories. By the way, at that with minus R, you don't have to say star at all. You can just say dot and it will uh, recurse the current directory. So so that's a uh, grep. Oh, one more thing. What if you didn't, there were too many matches and you didn't want to see every, uh, the matching line and you wanted to see only the names of the files, you can say grep minus R or without minus R, minus L as in list the file names. And now it is only printing the names of the files. And if the same string was matched multiple times within the same file, the, it will show up only once. That's grep. One more thing is you can use uh, whole words. So for example, if I look for lin, I, I can find all these matches. But if I say minus w, now it doesn't find anything. Why? Because this, these are whole words. So lin is, uh, a word but l-i-n-e is the whole word so it didn't match okay so partial matches are not not accepted all right so uh, let's see uh, we were looking at um, let's let's uh, create a large file first so if i say cat file one let's say file star two big file dot txt so if i cat big file dot txt there are a few lines what if uh, there were even more so if i say up i do it a few times so i append okay and i keep doing it a few times so now you will see if i cat big file that's a lot of lines and it scrolls past so this this sometimes happens where either ls or something is producing output 
that is very long um, more than a screen full that's when you should use less if you use less you can take a file and and view it you know page by page now i'm there are some keyboard shortcut uh, key bindings that i'm using so you need need to know i'm using k for going up and j for going down and then finally when you are done with it and you want to get out of it press q to quit that's very important because you'll be stuck in inside so again j and k and uh, q for exiting um, so that's what less is for you can also pipe uh, like for example if i say tree of dot dot you see that's too much stuff control c if i say pipe, pipe it through less now i can see the tree you know in a more manageable way okay so i'm pressing q to quit less all right how do I see processes that are running? Uh, so by the way, clear will clear this the terminal. If I want to see processes running, I press PS. So this is showing all the processes that have started um, from this current shell. Okay, children of the current shell. If you say PS A, it shows you more details. Okay. Um, not just more details but more processes okay so the one that I, that i use is psaux so full details of of all the things running on this machine so that's the current users processes ax is so there are there are various options for ps you can Check it out yourself with the man command. If you say man, then man is manual. And you can, by the way, man is going through less. So you have to use J and K to scroll up and down. And you can press shift G to go to the end or GG to go to the beginning. And uh, so that's how you see the manual documentation manual for any command. Okay. Let's, uh, so that was PS. Now, what if you wanted to find out your machine is slow you want to know what's taking up all the um, all the cpu and memory so you type top top is the command and so it's showing you the cpu 84 percent being used by whatever this is let me see apparently console is using or kazam is using 89 percent so yeah so that's what and then you can also see how much memory is there. Uh, so 16 gig total, four gig in use, not four gig, sorry, whatever this is, 390 megabits, I guess. Um, this is how much is free and this is total and um, etc. So top gives you useful information like that. And uh, to get out of it, you can press control C or you can press Q. There's another one called HTOP, which is more colorful, and it shows you all your CPU cores uh, separately. So it's uh, probably, you could say, it's more, you know, presentable. The presentation is a little bit better. And you can see what's going on. So the top ones are shown at the top. Let's quit. Clear. And let's make this a little smaller again. Uh, next some permission issues ch mod and ch own so uh, here's the the problem uh, let's say you had a file that you wanted to uh, output but it was read only so the ch mod is for uh, making something read only so if i say minus r so remove read permissions sorry minus w remove write permissions that makes it read only right and let's say file Let's say big file.txt. Okay, so I removed the right permissions, and if you now see, uh, okay, earlier right permissions were there, at least for the owner and the group. Um, big file. Now if I do ls minus l, big file again, and now the right permissions are gone. So this is what chmod does: change mode. Now if I try to append 
something to big file it says permission denied because big file is read only now if i say okay well um, let's make it writable again but this time we will so you have to say plus w plus w will make it writable by all but if i wanted only the all, all as in the user and group but if i wanted to make it writable only by the user you just say you the owner can write to it now so if we, if i do ls minus la of big file and now the user is able to write but the groups is still not able to at this point my previous command for appending works okay so that's what chmod does there's a lot more to it but this is the basics the other one is chown okay so chown changes the um, the ownership so right now all these files are owned by jitesh if i change it if i try to change it let's see who um, else i can change it to ch own uh, to say yeah www data uh, for big file so changing ownership of big file operation not permitted so that's where sudo comes in so if i use sudo is super user do do a super user it there it is you can prefix any com other command to run it as super user by default or any particular user if you want so let me show you su su the previous command that i didn't have permission operation not permitted i just put oops sorry yeah i prefix it with sudo and now it's asking because i perform i'm performing sudo it's asking me for password for this user jitesh user i type the password and now sudo has completed if i uh, do ls minus ltra look the owner is now www data ch own so now if i wanted to change the group also uh, i change ch grp and now the group is also that that i can change group and owner together using ch own so i just run ch own and i can just say jitesh colon jitesh username and then colon and then the group so this is how it's changing the ownerships uh, the user owner and the group owner ch own okay so the other thing about sudo let's you uh, talk about sudo a little more um i can let's see i don't see okay so this is the only user we have jitesh but if i were wanted to become root so if i just want to run something as root i say sudo and then whatever the command but if i wanted to become root and run a shell as root i should type sudo minus i as in open a login shell for that user in this case root so if i had another user other than uh, root let then i and i want to become that user I say minus u and then whatever the user's name is right and of course i don't have such a such a user so it's not going to work in this case but that's the that's the idea okay so you can also say sudo minus u and then some command right so and then that is you have to say some user whatever user you want and after you you the space is optional you can say it like this with a space or without space either way it will work the same way okay and then again like i said if you wanted to open a login shell first then you say minus i okay as in login shell so we have looked at um, some of the common and useful linux commands there are a lot more and of course these commands that we did look at there is a lot more to them there are lots more options 
Yeah, IO redirection is a big topic. Pipes are a big topic and very, very useful. I wish I could show you uh, more examples. And there are more commands, of course. There is a whole family of commands under SSH, SSH commands, which is SSH itself, then SCP and um, rsync and so on and so forth, which use um, the private and public key pairs uh, in a, to provide secure connections between different computers. Uh, you can even do port forwarding with SSH. So that's a big topic in itself. I think we'll uh, do another video on that. Then there is VI. Um, you, VI is uh, the default editor on, on Linux, and it's a very powerful editor, but it's very difficult to use, and there is a lot to learn there too. But the power is immense, so I think you should learn that. So we'll do a video on that also. Um, and then, of course, there are there are a lot more commands and a uh, lot more options to learn. But in spite of all that, I hope you learned something. See you in the next video. This one was common Linux commands every developer must know.